How's everybody doing? Peace and blessings to the hearers and doers of the Lord's word. This is the Awakening Podcast, and I'm Super Soligan. I want to go ahead and get into this message about marriage, the importance of marriage, and why God has ordained man and one, one man to unionize with one woman and to become one flesh. This is the importance of that. I want to, uh, marriage is a sacred vow between a man and a woman to become one flesh, as the scripture says. God's view on marriage is the divine plan for sexual relationships. To secure stable families and committed parents and spouses. And I'm getting this. Um, I want to uh, reference this from BibleStudyTools.com. Again, this is a reference from BibleStudyTools.com. But this is something we already know. This is something that is in the Bible. You already know that God has ordained this. For man and woman to become one flesh, as the scripture says, when this happens, when man, when a man and a woman gets together, these two, they pair bond. These two become one flesh, meaning they think of, they become of one mindset. One, that's how you can have a woman finishing a man's thoughts and vice versa. You have a woman start to take on the man's traits. She starts to act like him. You understand? And the man loves the woman deeply. This is because of the the unionization. Because see, God doesn't men men God doesn't speak anywhere in the Bible of jumping over the broom or or going in um, you know, going into the church and, and, and talking about with your family and talking about, you know, I do and all of this. No, God consummates marriage with sex. Once you may, but you as a man should, and as a woman should have be in a committed relationship, a committed, you commit and see, there's no such thing as dating in God's eyes. There's no dating. Like once you in a relationship and y'all and you two are having sex, you're married to that person. What well, even the state will recognize it. If you stay with them long enough, if y'all cohabitate long enough, even the state will just toss you into the common law marriage. You understand? Because that's just how it works. God doesn't see how things, how you see it. We see stuff as casual dating, things like this. No, you're casually committing adultery. You're, a lot of you people got multiple baby mamas and baby daddies. That's your wife. That's your husband. You need to go get back with them. See, we used to realize this only a couple of years, only a few years ago, that marriages and things, and the, when you get divorced, you traumatize the children. You harm your children when you get divorced. So you shouldn't get divorced lightly. You know, women didn't get divorced short of a man nearly killing them. Women didn't get divorced short of a man nearly killing them or doing some things that, you know, cheating on them, embarrassing them, all in the whole city and things like that. But if they didn't know about the man cheating, they wasn't worried about all that because they understood they're married. That's their relationship. If they go out and deviate anywhere from that, they're committing adultery. The same with the man. He's committing adultery. You understand? But it takes somebody has to be the bigger person. In today's day and age, we don't believe in being you know, in enduring things and in working for the things that we, you know, that we want, that, that we feel are important. It's a, you do one thing to one person, they ready to discard you. Like, you know, you've been done a hundred things for a person. You don't do one, they're ready to discard you like, you know, like they never knew you. But the Bible provides numerous verses that gives guidance for married couples, husbands, wives, newlyweds, and engagement. Scripture offers valuable wisdom and advises whether you are considering a dating relationship, planning a wedding, or finding your marriage struggling. Let's. We're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the Bible verses about marriage that's important. It's, and it's important as a and it shows its importance as a covenant bond between man and woman. That's all it is. And that's greater than going in any any church, jumping any broom. That's greater than having any state um, signing any paperwork. It's the covenant bond between a man and a woman. We you bonded like and that's why it's good. The law says that you should get what you should get in enter into relationships with people of equal yoke it's not good for a man to go get 
for a woman to go get with a man who already established and already built himself up. Because now he's not, she's not there to struggle with him, to show him that she's loyal to him. She don't have to show that anymore because he's already got everything. So he, now in turn, he doesn't even know if she's loyal. There will never be that type of um, covenant bond there between the two. The same when if you go get with a man who doesn't really look, he's not that attractive. You know, and he goes gets to get a woman who's like a 10 and she's attracting all the men. That's not going to be a good covenant bond. It's not equal yoke there. She's going to he's going to be insecure around her. There's going to be other men who, you know, who are more suited to be with her that he's going to see. She's going to see. So you have to use wisdom and discernment like God even tells you, gives you ways of finding a good wife in the Bible. He didn't say go find in a good thought, though. It's a good wife. Most of these uh, Bible verses I'm going to give you focuses on love and are a wonderful way to express your feelings of love and commitment to your spouse. You know, even during a struggling marriage, it's easy to focus on what's wrong instead of stopping to listen to God and ask him for guidance. You understand, like some people, again, divorce is at a high rate. God ain't ordained you to be getting with a person, making them a, a vow to this one, a covenant bond with this one, then leaving with the drop of a hat, then go making a covenant bond with the next one. No, it don't work like that. God, you're committing adultery and God is not happy with that. You're living in sin doing that. You need to stop that. You have a baby mama. You need to go get with that woman. That is your wife. If she don't want to be with you, then OK, fine. You know, then you move on. But you got to understand, man, and she need to, you need to uh, reiterate that to her, man. You are my wife. You like, you have already been consummated. How you going to get consummated again? You've already been consummated in the bedroom. You've had a child out of it. We, we need to change our ways of thinking on this, in this, uh, on this planet. We've gotten, we've let Satan infiltrate our ways of thinking and basically taught us a bunch, taught us backwards thinking. Because, like I said, there is no day casual sex, casual dating and things like that. You give your body to multiple people like and, and you not. Um, but you're not doing it to to bond like you. You're missing the point. Like there is the, the connection is happening, but you're doing it just to to, to bust a, to, you know, to ejaculate or just, you know, for a woman, you're just doing it to to, you know, to get off. And that's not how it's supposed to be. So. Let me go ahead and give you, thus saith the Lord. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. God is saying, man, you need to cling to your wife, cling to your husband. Don't be worried about what your mommy and daddy thinking. It's, you need to put your adult pants on, and you two need to cling to each other for guidance. And for, you know, y'all will be each other's help, each other's crutch. And that's how y'all going to develop that relationship to do that, to raise a family when y'all, when the kid come into play. Hebrews chapter 13, 4. Let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled. For God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. He will judge the sexually immoral and the adulterous, not just the adulterous. He's going to judge the sexually immoral also. So all y'all committing threesomes and all of this, having threesomes, causing your wife to be over here, being turning her out, causing her to be a lesbian, bisexual, all that. That's defiling your marriage bed, bro. And that's why your marriage is going to end. Don't be surprised when she got a girlfriend on the side and she not involving you. So those are two very powerful Bible verses right there about marriage. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory in, in Genesis. But in Proverbs verse chapter 18, verse 22, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Once you get a wife, man, and you taking, you know, you're doing your thing to, to take care of your household, you have favor from the Lord. Like favor mean God is is looking at you especially. Like married men, God is looking at you especially. If you are in if you're a righteous man, now if you're just a secular married man, it doesn't even matter. That's not gonna help you. 
But a righteous married man, God is looking at you, man. God is helping you. You know, when you and your wife getting into it and doing all that, God got special assignments to be looking at you, man. Got his people looking at you. Your guardian, your guardian angel, we all have one. Your guardian angel got a special assignment. He's protect, he's protecting your house and, you know, and stopping that enmity that Satan tries to call between you and your wife. John chapter 15, 13. Greater love no one has than this, than someone laid down his life for his friends. And I'll add your family. If you're willing to lay down your life for your wife and for your children, there's no greater love. You're really, you've you've done it. You've come like your your God's love has been completed in you, and you know what I mean. You can need to continue to. You still must continue to do God's will, but He's completed His love in you on the earth. What's done in heaven is uh, and done in earth. What's loosed in heaven is loosed in earth. Ephesians chapter five verse twenty five. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave Himself up for her. God is comparing your wife to the church and the, the us. He's comparing your wife to us, his family, the humans on earth that he care for. Jesus Christ gave his own life. He gave his holy life on the earth for you. And that's the same way husbands who love their wives, they'll give their life. Real, true husbands, righteous husbands will give their lives for their wife. She don't have to even ask. It's just that's what he's ordained. God has ordained us to do that. So for you women who going out here and don't appreciate your husband, going out here cheating on me and treating him all bad, just understand you are a Jezebel and God will punish you. You have hell to look forward to unless you repent. You need to repent and return to your husband. If you out there cheating on your husband, got a side life, you need to return to your husband, man, and repent. You out there cheating on your wife, you got a side life, you need to repent and return. Ephesians chapter 5. Well, I just read that um, Ephesians chapter five, verse 33, who, however, let each one of you love his wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Genesis chapter two, verse 18. Then the Lord said, this is the verse that I love because this just pretty much wraps it in Genesis chapter two, verse 18. The Lord God said this it is not good that a man should be alone i will make him a helper fit for him that's what men should be looking for your wife should you should be looking for a helper fit for you when you're looking for a wife and that's what i mean by the equal yoke but god himself looked down at man being alone and said that's not good that's enough First Peter chapter four, verse eight, above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins. Again, the purpose of marriage and stuff for men is to keep men and women is to keep them happy and have their needs fulfilled within a controlled environment. A man don't have to go out and go pay prostitutes and go chase women all day. He has his woman to meet all those needs. The woman ain't got to go out here, go to the clubs, getting all drunk, putting on makeup all day, having her covering gone. Men can rape her, any, do anything to her. She has her husband there to fulfill her needs sexually and protect financially and to protect her. Now, financially, meaning that the man isn't a burden on her. Don't mean he have to be paying for everything. In 2022, women can work and have equality. It's equal yoke. It's not fair for the man to just have to pay for everything. That's not even fair. Now, once y'all have a family and things get established, things may change, like dynamics change. That just comes with, that's the discussion between y'all, not society and social media. Proverbs verse 31 chapter 10 a excellent wife who can find she is far more precious than jewels mark chapter 10 verse 6 9 but from the beginning this is mark chapter 10 verse 6 through 9 but from the beginning of creation god made them male and female 
God made them male and female from the beginning of creation. God made them male and female. There's only two genders. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife. The two shall become one flesh. They are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. There is no divorce. Unless the woman is passed, the man is dead. There is no divorce. So you need to just get that out of your head. You understand a lot of y'all is running around her committing major adultery sins right now. And you don't, and that's a dangerous thing to do. You don't want to just be freely sinning against the Lord, man, rebelling against the Lord. So with that being said, I wanted to just go ahead and give you that. I mean, marriage, there is, this is a purpose for the Lord. Marriage, I just explained that to you. Marriage is to, is the best parameters to raise children and have a healthy society. It keeps, marriage keeps it keeps people from it keeps some people from being defiled. You know, they would have defiled themselves if they weren't married. That's why I advise young women to get married. Why would you encourage them to have a hot girl summer when the end goal is to get married anyway? And you don't want to be having hot girl summers up until your old age. Like you get so old, you get played out of the market. The market no longer wants you. And then it's too late. You have to hone and cultivate these skills. There's women who been married in their 20s, 18 years old, they married and they and they undefiled. Those are chaste women. Those women are, and their husbands take care of them. You know, they have families. This is these are this is how society is supposed to be structured. Look at how society, the degradation of society when you got all these children out of wedlock. It's chaos. That's not God never ordained this, but we just look at we're blinded. A lot of, you know, a lot of us are blinded by in um, the scales are still on people's eyes just due to Satan and due to the seeing nature of this world. They don't see it. You know, they think this is normal, but that you thought this was normal until you see all the chaos that comes from it, the turmoil that comes from it, the broken human beings that comes from these broken homes. That's just how it works. We understood this only years ago. So with that being said, this is Super Solican. Peace and blessings to the hearers and the doers of the Lord's word. A special shout out to those who are sealed in the book of life of Christ. This is the Awakening Podcast. I'm gone.